couple of hours sure. ago. Uh, Republicans have got to be licking their chops right now. Yeah, we're pretty happy. I think what you're seeing, Leland, is a repeat of what happened in the first year of Obama's presidency. In 2008, the, the Democrats interpreted, the progressives anyway, interpreted it as a mandate, went way too far to the left, and McGovern won the Virginia race for governor in 2009. Uh, of course, that ushered in the Tea Party movement that brought Nancy Pelosi out of the speaker's chair. Here we are again. The left went way too far left. America is not there. And you're seeing the, uh, you know, the rebound of that. Sarah made an interesting point, which was Youngkin made his race, and we're watching his headquarters now, hoping that he comes out at some point to make a speech. He may be waiting uh, to see if this race gets called in a little while to declare victory. Uh, Sarah made a great point, and that is Youngkin ran on issues. McAuliffe ran on personality sure. against Trump. Sure. Does that change the Republican playbook for 2022? I think very clearly it should show the Democrats that running against Trump didn't work here. Yeah. So I, I, that you can make that uh, conclusion very easily. What is the looking forward? Does it also prove that there is a path to victory, perhaps with Donald Trump uh, wrapping yourself and your arms around Donald Trump in deep red states and not having to embrace him in Purple states? You know, I think each state is going to run their own race, yeah. you know, for each state, so uh, um, probably so. We think about what the number one issue here in this race was, and we, not say, we say number one issue not because we think it's the number one issue, it's because the polling tells us uh, the number one issue, which is education. Typically, Democrats are able to, to capture that. How was Youngkin able to turn education to be the number one issue and then win on it? I think a lot of Americans, you know, focused on national politics, state politics, and they forgot about school boards. And for a few decades, the Democrats took those over. And suddenly, through this past year or so, America realized just how radical leftist the, the school boards have gone. Uh, that awakening is what we see in this election. Are, you, are we seeing that play out in other places other than just in Virginia, as sure. you talk to folks? Yeah, you know, you look at what happened tonight in Minneapolis, right? The police, they voted on whether or not to do away with the police department. This is in Minneapolis, and they voted by 14 points to keep the police department. So here's, you know, the defund the police movement in Minneapolis. If they can't get it done in Minneapolis, AOC needs to just shut up. Because, I mean, it's not happening, right? I mean, so this whole crazy, woke culture is being rejected by all of America. Re revolt against the woke worldview <laughs> is what one of our guests called it a little bit earlier. Exactly. I want to follow up on the building behind us. Uh, does this mean that Democrats are going to double down on trying to push through something? Or are Republicans emboldened to be able to stop these two huge Biden spending plans. I think you're going to see more Democrats join the Manchin Cinema group, um, particularly in the Senate. We knew there were several that were kind of keeping quiet that didn't necessarily agree with this huge, massive spending, particularly some of the pieces of it, like, you know, creating an IRS um, audit of everyone's checking account, some of that more communist Chinese type stuff that's in that progressive movement. Um, you're going to see more sen senators join uh, Manchin. Yeah, well, if these numbers hold and proving that Democrats in plus 10 districts and states are vulnerable. Uh, oh. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.